We know that there is a presidential election, of course, on the way, and it's been getting a lot of attention. But on the same day, there is a referendum on blasphemy. What exactly is this? Well, John Hamill from Atheist Ireland and Tim Jackson from Believe in Respect join me on the line now. Good morning to both of you, gentlemen. Morning. Good morning, Joe. John, I was thinking about this this morning, and I wonder, could it be loosely described as the Dara O'Brien or in a Limerick context, Carl Spain referendum, uh, something to do with comedians and what they're allowed to say or not to say in their routines? Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's quite fair. Um, so what blasphemy laws do is to ring fence one specific kind of idea, that's religious ideas, and criminalise criticism of those concepts. And so we all have ideas that we sincerely believe in. Maybe some of us believe strongly in human rights or in socialism or in the free market and in an open society, whether it's Darrow Brain or Carl Spain, uh, ideas can be freely criticised and those who believe in specific ideas are expected to defend them. But the, the religious people that I know are not wilting snowflakes who can't defend their own ideas without getting the Gardaí involved to criminalise their critics. The, the, the religious people that I know are just as able to defend their faith as anyone else. And really, it's an insult to the religious to suggest that among all of the ideas that are sincerely held in Ireland, only the religious need the criminal justice system to protect them from criticism. So maybe there's a good question there for... Um, for Tim, if Tim believes that we should criminalise the criticism of religious ideas, would he also support a law that prohibits criticism of atheism? So Cardinal Cormac Murphy O'Connor has said in a TV interview that atheists are not fully human. Now, I'm perfectly happy to defend my ideas uh, about atheism myself without getting the Guardian involved, but I wonder would Tim like to outlaw okay. the criticism of well, atheism? Well, well, let's let's really give Tim an, o- an opportunity to, to respond to that. While Carl Spain might be tickled at the idea of a referendum just for him, Tim, uh, what's your perspective on this? Well, I think John has unfortunately presented a really big straw man argument there because that just is not the case that ideas can be prosecuted. The point of the blasphemy law and the clause in the Constitution is that when you present your ideas, you just have to do so in a way that isn't grossly abusive of someone's sincerely held belief. So there is no problem with criticising anyone's religious beliefs, or atheism for that matter. And we know that from reading the opinion pieces of newspapers from week to week. And what all of this clause promotes is a healthy respect when it comes to public discourse and, and conversation around religious topics so that no one is shut out of debate and freedom of speech in the proper sense is upheld because no one believes in an absolute right to freedom of speech, which is why we have prohibitions on indecent and seditious speech that will remain. Um, so, for example, you can't climb onto an aeroplane and say and shout fire because you will cause chaos and it's not a proper use of freedom of speech, that right. So, uh, but, but, but will but, that continue to exist regardless of the outcome of the referendum on blasphemy? Uh, well, there'll still be a prohibition on indecent and seditious speech in the Constitution after this referendum, regardless of how it turns out. So, so is, the, is, the, the, is that so, sufficient, uh, is the question I'm asking? Is, is what sufficient? Is that sufficient, that that that, that, that exists? Well, I think it's only right in the society, for example, that you can't incite violence against anybody, which would be totally indecent, that you can't plot the downfall of the nation, which is why there's a clause on sedition, and that there should be limits to one's free speech, which is needed for a healthy function in society, because the authors of the Constitution were not uh, flippant when they put this document together. They had fought long and hard and shed their own blood so that we would have our own state and nation. And so they were incredibly well-trained in philosophy, and they knew that in order to unify society and maintain peaceable relations, there would have to be respect when it comes to all those three topics um, of nationhood, religion, and personal integrity. Integrity, Because uh, also there's a deeper reason why the blasphemy clause is needed, and that our fundamental rights hang on the idea that our rights come from God and not from the government, because if they come from the government, they can be taken away by the government. And so the authors, again, the patriots of old, were incredibly wise people 
who carefully crafted this constitution and we should tread carefully. Right. Uh, John, it's not as if people are being dragged before the courts on a regular basis um, under this constitutional clause. Uh, yes, well, firstly, I agree with him that um, uh, I'm not a free speech absolutist. So uh, I think the, um, uh, the good rule of thumb in this area is that no person is beneath respect, but no idea is above criticism. So as Tim says, uh, there's lots of occasions when people say things that they should not be allowed to say, and incitement to religious hatred is already a crime, even if we remove blasphemy from the uh, Constitution. It will still be a crime to attack people. But what blasphemy does is it protects ideas uh, from criticism, and where Tim says that um, it's perfectly fine to criticise religious ideas because uh, he's seen it being done, um, well, what he hasn't seen is all of the newspaper articles that were censored by the media because they might be blasphemous. Uh, I've seen some of them because some of my articles have been censored. Um, and lastly, I would also disagree with Tim that his rights come from God and not from the Constitution. And um, Of course, uh, if all of your rights come from God, then you could ask God to enforce them for you, but... Um, uh, blasphemy doesn't have uh, God enforcing your rights. It has the Guardi enforcing your rights. Yeah, yeah. Well, so to follow on there from what John has said, I would think he's disagreeing with people such as Martin Luther King. For example, if you read Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail, he was quite explicit in stating that your human rights come from the natural law, which is based on the eternal law. And me and John have discussed this before and how philosophers for millennia have discussed these topics so that a free and ordered and unchaotic society can be built in a way that will allow people to flourish. And so I would just say that the people who crafted this constitution, which does uh, uphold our human rights, which do exist prior to government, that they should be shown some respect as well in this because they weren't just archaic people who didn't have any real substance or spine. They were people who shed blood, sweated for the freedom of that we have that we enjoy today. And I would also say that our blasphemy law is in no way prohibitive of expressing ideas. Again, so long as they are not grossly abusive, okay, which well, is perfectly for, for, for fair. example, you know, if somebody came into this studio and described a specific religion as hocus pocus magic with no basis whatsoever, is is that blasphemous? There is no problem with saying that whatsoever. In fact, again, in a previous debate I had on another station, that was said of the Gospels that they were just silly, and there's no problem. They're allowed to express their views. In fact, the legislation just says, so long as the views are not grossly abusive, uh, they're perfectly permissible. And even if they're brought before the courts or the prosecution is attempted by anyone, and no prosecution has been successful in 163 years, that if the defendant can show that they were of some literary, culture, cultural or academic value in the comments, they will be found not guilty. Well, so, John, what's the problem then? Yeah, well, Tim is right that um, the law requires, uh, in order for a prosecution to be successful, the law requires um, that a substantial number of the adherents of a particular religion uh, become outraged. Uh, now, for example, Dr. Ali Salim in the Klonsky Mosque has said, if anyone publishes the Charlie Hebdo cartoons in Ireland, he will take a blasphemy case against them. And the law, therefore, uh, in order to allow uh, Ali Salim to be successful in that, the law requires him to have people show outrage about that. Um, so I don't think the law should be requiring uh, outrage or incentivizing uh, people to become outraged. Um, but, uh, yeah, Tim, Tim's exactly right that uh, the people who wrote the Constitution uh, were very religious and they believe that blasphemy should be a crime that's prosecuted through the court. And they believe lots of other things, like discrimination against gay people, discrimination against women, the shaming of unmarried parents, and all of these uh, ideas that people had when the Constitution was written are now uh, outdated, and they are just anachronisms 
and blasphemy is one more anachronism that needs to and, go. And, and, and by the uh, way, uh, thanks, you, uh, just one second, one second. Um, uh, the, this um, 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 part of the Constitution, as we well know, you know, when Christianity was being founded, it was oppressed and terrible things were said about it. There may well be religions out there right now in Ireland that people have major issues with, but perhaps 50 years from now, they'll be seen as part of the mainstream. So are they not deserving of protection? Uh, Yeah, well, I can give you a good example of that. Um, Jesus Christ himself uh, was accused of blasphemy and had to flee Jerusalem because the Jews wanted to stone him to death. So if you have a Jewish community in Ireland uh, who sees the second coming of Christ back to Limerick tomorrow, and Christ says the same thing in Limerick tomorrow that he said in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, then Jesus Christ himself can be prosecuted for blasphemy in the Irish courts. And this is completely absurd. It's a total anachronism, and it really needs to go. I think, John, you're being a little bit dramatic now to say that anyone could be prosecuted in the courts for saying the second coming of Christ has occurred in Limerick, and that there will be, again, zero problems with any ideas being expressed, so long as they're not done in a way that's grossly abusive or unnecessarily inflammatory. And so also, when it comes to the authors of the Constitution, I would totally reject the idea that they were discriminatory. They had a very well-ordered and very precise idea of what it takes to find an ordered society and one that would maintain peaceable relations between people. And I think as well, we nowadays take for granted all that they did for us so that we enjoy freedom uh, today. Can can, can I just put another example out there? Because I think we're finding anyway that the interest level in this referendum isn't that high. And to some degree, that's the responsibility of the media. We haven't discussed it enough, perhaps. Um, But I'm just trying to contextualise it. There was a famous piece of graffiti in Liverpool at one stage. Jesus saves, but Rush scores the rebound. About Ian Rush. Is that blasphemy? It's not well, blasphemy at all. It's just good humour, I think. Uh, is, it, is it, though? That, that's the problem, Joe. I think um, uh, Tim can, can say that that is not offensive to him. But the test in the law is not uh, what is offensive to Tim Jackson. The test in the law is it's what whether can it's be offensive... Abusive. Uh, what can can cause outrage among a substantial number of people? Now, I can think of lots of things that would call uh, cause outrage about, among a substantial number of people and lots of different religions, which is perfectly fine with Tim. So, uh, exactly as you say, Joe, if we just look at this in terms of Christianity and Christians today, then you might say it's difficult to procure a prosecution. But if you consider that you have a particular conservative group, then all that we need to do is to find a substantial number of that conservative group who is outraged, and then they have a veto on what the rest of us can discuss. And as I say, I I have experienced this personally. I have agreed to write articles for newspapers in Ireland when I write my opinion, which would be entirely acceptable to Tim, but the sub-editor in the newspaper says we have some conservative readers. They won't be happy with this. Therefore, we're not printing it. Can um, I just... So, can I just... Res- oh, sorry, go ahead, John. Sorry. Um, no, go ahead, Tim. I'm just saying that uh, your particular know, opinion yeah. may not be that different from yeah. mine. But whether you or I think uh, something is outrageous is not what the test in the law is. Yeah, and just to respond, the legislation itself states, and I think this goes some ways to answering your question about that billboard in Liverpool, it shall be a defence to proceedings for an offence under this section for the defendant to prove that a reasonable person would find genuine literary, artistic, political, scientific or academic value in the matter to which the offence relates. So I think or, that, or comedic, billboard, or comedic. That, that billboard would probably come under the... Comedic uh, value? Bra- yeah, the bracket of literary value. Right, OK. So, so the, the, the proposal problems. in the referendum um, concerns the issue of blasphemy. The Constitution says that publishing or saying something blasphemous is a criminal offence. And so to give effect to this constitutional requirement, publishing or uttering something blasphemous is a criminal offence under our law with a fine of up to 25 grand if a person is convicted 
And that's under the 2009 Defamation Act. And the proposed amendment in the referendum is to remove the word blasphemous from the Constitution. And, and here's an interesting point, the definition of blasphemy. There's no definition contained within the Constitution itself, but the definition of the offence of blasphemy is set out in the 2009 Defamation Act. And people in the back of their heads might remember this because there was a controversy at that point. Um, and it says that uh, a person publishes or utters something blasphemous if they publish or say something that is grossly abusive or insulting in relation to matters held sacred by any religion and thereby causing outrage among a substantial number of followers of that religion and that the person in publishing or uttering intends to cause such outrage. Yes, that's right. And um, I think, uh, Joe, your listeners may have noticed that Tim uh, didn't quite answer my question about whether religious ideas should be protected for criticism. So I think... um, I, I, I don't think there's any to be protected. So I think the religious listeners uh, who are listening to this show can either send out one of two messages internationally. They can either send out a message that they're strong in their faith, they're perfectly happy for people to criticize their faith, and that they can defend their faith just as much as an atheist can defend his belief, uh, or else they can uh, vote to retain blasphemy laws, which means that there's some kind of wilting special snowflake who can't defend their faith just like anyone else and needs the guard to do it for them. Tim? And I think all people know religious ideas are totally open to criticism in this country. What's not really acceptable is grossly abusing someone's sincerely held beliefs. And uh, therefore, I think that most people who want to uphold peaceable relations and respectful dialogue between different communities should go out and vote no on October 26th. Does that include atheist beliefs, Tim? Exactly. Should it be be a crime to grossly offend an atheist in Ireland? Well, you can campaign for that and we'll have a referendum to include that. Well, no, I I want to campaign against that. I want to campaign that it should not be a crime to to offend someone's beliefs. You're the person who wants to make it a crime to offend someone's beliefs. No, no. If, if you uh, do, you think it shouldn't be a crime to grossly abuse your sincerely held beliefs? Yes, I think uh, whatever whatever one uh, somebody believes, they should uh, be required in an open and democratic society to defend their own beliefs without getting. But that's not what involved. I asked. That's not what I asked. I asked you: Should I be entitled to grossly abuse y- your sincerely? It's a gross abuse of my. Well, I think for Cardinal I think that Cormac would... Murphy O'Connor to say that atheists are not fully human. But my response to that should be to have a, a discussion with the Cardinal about it. It shouldn't be to rush off to the nearest guard station. Right. So, so, sorry. And are you saying that it, except um, if it's incitement to hatred? Is that right? Well, if it's incitement to hatred, that will still be a crime even after we remove the blasphemy law. So, right. incitement to and, hatred. And Tim, do you agree with that particular point um, that, that John that, makes? That there shouldn't be no, no. That, that, that the incitement to hatred will still be a crime, even if blasphemy is removed from um, the constitution absolutely. in the referendum. Uh, absolutely, I think it should remain a crime. But, but um, sorry, but does it still remain a crime though? It's, I'll take incitement John's to word. hatred legislation is that not separate? I'll take John's word for it that it does still remain a crime. No, but I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure it is separate. Is it not? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Is John? Is that right? Yes, it is, and and the distinction there is the distinction between attacking people versus criticizing ideas. So in, incitement to hatred um, criminalizes attacking people because they're part of a minority group, uh, including a religious minority group, whereas uh, blasphemy outlaws criticizing ideas. And um, if we vote to remove the blasphemy law, we'll just remove the prohibition against criticising ideas and we will retain the incitement to hatred law okay. against criticising Okay, well, 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 can, can I thank both of you for a very civilised debate? I doubt that either of you, um, regardless of your differing views, will end up outside a Carl Spain or Darrow Brian gig um, <laughs> complaining, uh, or any other comedian for that matter, um, uh, depending or not on the outcome of this referendum on blasphemy, which happens the same day as the presidential election next Friday. Friday, and we appreciate uh, your time and input this morning. That's John Hamill from Atheist Ireland and Tim Jackson from Believe in Respect.